guys, what's up? It's me, Catherine, and in today's video, we're going to talk about how to build and organize your audition rep book. If you're new to my channel, hello and welcome. My name's Catherine Steele, and I put out a new theater-related video on every Theater Thursday, plus I do bonus uploads throughout the week, so if you haven't already and you'd like to, go ahead and hit subscribe. That way you get notified for all future videos and you get to join the Theater Thursday fam. First, we take over Broadway, and then the world. You can follow me at Kath underscore Steel on Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram. That's a great place to ask me questions, to hang out. So, let's jump into the video. For those of you who might not know what a rep book is, basically it's a place to house all of your audition rep. In this case, sheet music. You could put copies of monologues in there if you wanted to, but I don't really know people who do that. But if you're into it, go for it. This is a very important tool when it comes to being a working musical theater actor. These are all kind of my tricks and opinions, so keep that in mind. You don't have to follow this to a T. This is just what I've experienced in the professional working world. So let's talk about how to build your book. The material that's in your book should fit your casting type. If you don't know what your casting type is, or if you want to learn more about casting types and how to figure it out, I did a very detailed video on that. So I'll leave that in the description down below. Additionally, these pieces should showcase the best parts of your voice while hiding your weaknesses. It should be easy enough for an accompanist to sight read. And each of your cuts should tell a whole story. And by that, I mean there should be an emotional journey even if you're doing a 32, 16, or 8 bar cut. So, what kind of song should be in your rep book? To start off, I'd recommend having a classic up-tempo, a classic ballad, contemporary up-tempo, and a contemporary ballad. That obviously doesn't cover every single audition, but it's a good place to start for a young actor looking to build their book. As you continue to build your book and swap in new material, I would definitely recommend adding more categories like pop, opera, rock, operetta, contemporary storytelling piece. By that I mean something by like Jason Robert Brown, Kerrigan and Lattermill, Pasek and Paul, Drew Gasparini, 50s, 60s, golden age, pre-golden age, 80s mega musical, Sondheim, country, regular pop music, and by that I mean top 40, like what's on the radio right now. Another category that I would definitely recommend all young musical theater professionals have, Disney. It's insane how many shows are getting produced that are either Disney or new shows that Disney is producing, or jobs available in terms of Disney cruises. So I definitely recommend having rep material that that matches you and also what character you could realistically portray. So in your book you should have four cuts of the same song. The whole song, a 32 bar cut, a 16 bar cut, and an 8 bar cut. 8 bar cuts don't get used a ton on kind of like the regional community school level, but if you're going in for like really really high volume like national tours, Broadway, that sort of stuff, sometimes they do want to see 8 bar cuts, especially if they're going to be really busy. So I'd recommend having that cut just in case you get asked for it. When you're creating these cuts, don't white out or cross out any bars you're not using. Instead, go ahead and cut your sheet music physically, like with scissors. Then you're going to glue stick it or tape it in the order that you want it to appear, and then Xerox a clean copy so you get something that looks like this. This makes it super clean and clear for your accompanist. There's no way that they'll end up playing the extra bars because they're not there. Do not use sheet protectors. Even if you have the non-glare sheet protectors, they still glare. Make sure to clearly write in the title of the song, the composer, and the page numbers for any cuts of your song that may have lost it. When it comes to creating a cut of a song, make sure to do the meatiest part of it. You're doing yourself a disservice if you're in the audition room and you just show them eight bars of you sing, speaking, emoting. Go ahead and show them eight bars of whatever you do best. If you need help actually finding what songs to put in your rep book, I have a video on finding the best audition songs for you. So if you haven't checked that one out, I'll leave that in the down bar also. Something huge to keep in mind, your rep book is your baby. This is the thing that's going to get you hired. So be protective of it. Don't throw it around. Take good care of it. Always keep an extra copy of your entire rep book in your car because you never know when you might need it. Also, don't 
tell people what's in your rep book, especially if they're your same type or you live in the same area. That's a great way for everyone to steal your material at your next audition. Not a smart move. So how to organize your rep book? There are a bunch of different ways you can do this. You can either organize it by cut, you can organize it by genre, you can organize it alphabetically by show or composer. Regardless what way you choose to organize your book, I definitely recommend having a table of contents at the beginning of your book. Also in an audition situation, if a panel really likes you, they might ask for your rep list, which is the table of contents, so you can just hand them the paper and go like, here, here's everything in my book, what more do you want me to sing for you? I can sing you anything on that list. And that's a great way to spend extra time in the audition room. Additionally, a lot of people like to do the two book system. I personally am also a big fan of this. Basically, you have your big rep book with your 4, 10, 12, 15 songs in there, and then you have your smaller rep book which just includes what you're going to sing for this one audition. That way there isn't extraneous pages flipping around so that the pianist can't accidentally lose their place or anything like that. It's totally foolproof if they only have one song in one binder. So when you go into any audition, just bring in both books. So there you guys go. Those are my top tips when it comes to organizing and building your audition rep book. If you guys like this video or if it helped you out in any way, please give it a big thumbs up. It really helps me out. If you haven't already and you'd like to, go ahead and hit subscribe. I hope you guys are having a great day. I love you so much. Break a leg and I will see you guys next time. Bye!